Hello everybody, this is Trigger FTU, also known as the Phantom Fox. We have ourselves, believe it or not, the Ion Neo Retro Power Edition. Pocket gaming is kind of becoming a thing. So, you know, the Valve Steam Deck's coming out in February and being released. And Nintendo's doing their thing with the Switch. Xbox has their X Cloud with mobile services, and of course Sony has their Cloud Play with their um, PlayStation Play or PlayStation Now services. But beyond that, we're here to take a look at the Retro Power. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start on the um, the docking station here. It um, it comes in a rather relatively small box, and oh, in the box, um, okay. Super Power Ion, Ion Neo Docking Station. Okay, this is um, interesting. So it's fully certified for what looks to be mm, about 20 volt, 3 amp. And um, yeah, whoa, hello. Looks like it comes with a gigabit connection, an HDMI 2.0 power supply connector for I believe that's up to 60 watts, if not greater. And then what looks to be one, two, three high speed USB 3.0 ports, one that actually is a USB-C. Um, pretty plain on this side and, okay. So it pops open and of course you see your typical Thunderbolt or USB-C port that would be on the inside and, uh, wow. Build quality on it is pretty good. Oh, this is something I hadn't noticed. On the side, there's a micro SD slot and a full size SD slot. So if you want to expand the storage or use it for other things, like uh, being a retro PC, I guess you can do that if you have an SD card that you can slap right in there while your system is docked and use like a USB or a Bluetooth based controller, such as you know the, the Xbox series or Xbox One controllers are now currently Bluetooth. Putting that off to the side, taking a look inside the box here for the docking station, you have a simple bit of instructions and information. Um, a lot of this stuff is in Chinese by the looks of it. Part of it's in English. Uh, experience interface explains everything where everything is. So hats off to you guys over at Aya for including this in the box for the uh, INEO Retro Powered Edition. So looking at the box here for the Retro Power, as you can see, it has a classic design of the Nintendo Switch, but it looks like they're using the color design that they used for you know some of the classic game systems such as the NES from like the 1980s, 1970s models from like Japan. Uh, really well built quality. This thing is incredibly heavy with the box. Um, on the back, it actually demonstrates and shows you know, what all it comes with, the, the location from their tablet PC, what it comes with. Um, comes with the, the tablet computers, are calling it, or console, um, charging cable, power charger, USB-C, USB adapter, of course, user manual, and of course, the location where they're from. This, of course, is the upgraded version from what you find from the OG model. So the OG, OG Aya Neo came with a 4500U. This one comes with an overclocked and custom-built 4800U. And it comes with one terabyte of storage instead of 512. And um, it comes with basically USB-C based connections and ports. So I love the design that they throw on there. I mean, you take a look at it on the front. A lot of people who have played the classic games know ex exactly what they're putting here on the images. You know, they have like Kirby, um, I don't know, uh, Capcom guy, uh, uh, or maybe that's Super Metroid, Samus, uh, Mario, you know, so on and so forth. It's, it's really amazing that they use such a design and color to it. Alrighty, so unboxing this, uh, wow, the box is really, really well sealed I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to open it which goes to show with this build quality of the casing you know whenever your device arrives and you order it 
it's going to really be intact. Um, but that's just what the box itself. We'll see how everything is on the inside with uh, if they have any cushioning, of course, for the system. Oh, okay. So this is interesting. Uh, it's actually a bit of advertisement going on, powered by 8-core AMD Ryzen 7, of course, 4800U mobile processor, and of course, Radeon Graphics. Radeon Graphics is really amazing. So instead of using Intel, this one runs AMD, and I uh, they wanted to do something, you know, AMD based because the Ryzen series with their Zen 2, Zen 3, and now currently coming out soon, Zen 4, is low TDP but high performance. Um, launched a new way of playing video games and can support most of the popular titles on the PC market. We'll be able to check that out. Comes with a 7 inch screen, so it's going to be a lot more bigger than what you find on the GPD Win 3. And it's probably going to be around the same size, if not slightly bigger, than the Nintendo Switch. Ultra fast NVMe SSD, so that is up to 3500 megabit, megabytes per second, so that's definitely going to be either PCI 3 or PCI 4. Um, judging by the fact that it's a 4800U, I'm going to say PCI 3.0 speeds, which is, that is really, really quick. Uh, 16 gigabytes of 46, 4266 megahertz low power DDR4X RAM array. So it's going to have a lot of throughput. 40, 47 watt hour battery that supports up to six hours. Now, the TDP and the games that you play, that can vary. Playing something classic like, I don't know, Super Mario Brothers on emulation, or maybe um, Dead Souls or stuff like that, that 2D platformers, it, it might last up to six hours of gaming. It might not. You gotta know, running five watts TDP, you might get that six hours. So popping open the thing here. We have um, a nice little foam, and of course, um, wow, it looks like a film that's over the actual device. So now we have the device itself, and my goodness, this um, this feels amazing. I mean, it, it's really snappy. It's the if you take a look at the oh my goodness, the controls for the analog sticks. If you take a look, the shielding is similar to that of the Nintendo Switch controls. So if you so if you take a Nintendo Switch and you hold it in your hands and you feel the analog sticks, that's that's basically what these feel and look like. Um, so going along the top here we have our power button, volume up, volume down, are of course our full fledged 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB port and a full powered USB 3.2 port. We have our grill for ventilation out heating. So our L and R buttons and analog triggers, which are analog, mind you, analog, not digital, but analog. So we'll try a few games out with that later on. Um, nothing along the sides here. Along the bottom, we have two full-fledged stereo ports. Um, looks like another ventilation and a USB type C. This is where it connects to the, the the docking station, of course, or you can power it and charge it. Um, the material is really well built for a plastic. It, it's 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 really incredibly well built. Um, it feels premium. Five point display for a touch screen, which isn't bad at 800 800p. Um, testing out some of the buttons here, the A, B, X, Y buttons, they feel very classic. It's, it's definitely something from an old day experience. <laughs> I, I remember playing the NES system and I've got a NES mini here and the controls, if you ever had a feeling for that, that that's pretty much how it feels like. Um, let's see, we have other buttons here that are utilized. We have our uh, start and stop Xbox keys, basically, Xbox button, and I don't know what this other button is. Menu button or view button? Yeah. 
So menu, Xbox, and view button, and menu. That's interesting. And then on this side, of course, we have three other buttons, which is the escape, task manager, Windows home key, and keyboard button. Now the keyboard button, you don't have a real keyboard to work with, so you have to work with a virtual keyboard. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there's other functionality with that, with these buttons as well, to bring up, say, IS space. And you know, we got that beautiful film and... Oh yeah, that feels sexy. And... That feels really good. And the screen is definitely what seems to be Gorilla Glass, and it's definitely going to be a fingerprint magnet. So I suggest if you buy one of these, um, get a screen protector. That is gonna be your best friend, a screen protector. We will see what else we have inside. Inside, of course, an extra piece of film, foam, which is not easy to get out. Thank goodness, because we have our peripherals. Power delivery up to 60 watts using that wonderful USB-C slash Thunderbolt connection. And up here we have uh, a nice little cable just for that, of course. We'll throw this all to the side because we'll take a look at it. Um, let's see what we have here. We have two other things that are in here. Uh, huh. So as you saw on the actual device, it has nothing but USB 3.2 C ports. This is an adapter in case you want to attach something that's USB-A to any of the ports. Uh, most of the stuff that I have are all USB-C, so I probably won't be needing to use these anytime soon. I may be able to use them for my mouse and keyboard for setting it up. Something else that I really appreciate is the fact that they come with these adapters. Now these things are part of the whole modular setup that I was talking about. We have your EU-based connection, our Canada-based connection, and of course our European plug trong, prong. And how these attach by the look of it is they just snap right in. And then if you want to use a US connector, you just scroll that out. I'm going to put the EU connector because I'm currently in Europe, of course. So that little connector is going to come in handy. So the INEO, you know, we have a docking station. You can plug that into a TV and start playing away. And there you go. You get the full-fledged experience right from the docking station. Something that I'm really enjoying is the fact that the docking station helps to hold up the console so it's not putting all the strain on that USB port. And then the fact that it's at an angle as it is, so it actually puts a little bit added support to it. So here we are with the Ioneo. This thing is amazing. It looks great. It's very a nod off to the classic days. The dimensions. Let's take a look at this and compare it to, say, the GPD Win 3 and the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you have a Nintendo Switch, then you'll have a better understanding of how this is going to look. So, but if not, don't worry, we have one just in case you don't. So, put that to the side. I got a little, little bit of a demonstration for this thing whenever it comes to showing off some games and gameplay footage on it. So, grabbing for my Nintendo Switch, of course. Here's the Nintendo Switch. Um, don't mind the fact that it turned on. To get a better understanding of how big this thing is, um, well, you take a look at the Nintendo Switch compared to the Ioneo. It's got a bit of a thickness to it, clearly. Plus, the size is significantly different. Taking the control bars off and putting only the screen, you can see that the screen is bigger on the Ioneo. So, putting this over to the side so that we can get a better look of what we're working with. Of course, they nod off to using the similar design that they have for the Nintendo controllers, but they're much more bigger. And Nintendo controllers are all fully digital, but yeah, that's a whole different thing. So compared to the Nintendo Switch, the screen's resolution and size that you get, this at 800 to 900p, this at 720p, big difference. Of course, my um, screen protector on the Switch is a bit of a finger magnet. Go figure. 
fingerprint magnet, go figure. So taking a look at it top to bottom, you can really see the difference. Now thickness. There is a significant thickness in the Ioneo. Looking at the back, of course, you get to see the difference between the two of them. The feeling of the controls, you get to see, of course, from the analog to digital based R1 and R2 triggers. This is how big the Ioneo is compared to the Nintendo Switch. So now that you understand how big the Nintendo Switch is, and how big this Ioneo is. Let's take into comparison to the um, GPD Win 3. This was released about a year ago also from GPD. And this thing has a bit of an interesting little different control scheme to it. So, of course, the controls are on top. Controls, look, feel, really good. Much bigger difference. As you can clearly see, 5-inch display, 7-inch display, and of course the thickness difference is very significant. Whereas, you know, Intel-based GPD Win 3 compared to the AMD-based Ioneo Retro Power Edition. Of course, this one has a thing on it, that one doesn't. So, that's what we have for this video right here. Um, there it is, the Ioneo, fully unboxed, prepped and ready. We will do a setup video here momentarily. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow. Like it if you liked it. Next video to be posted, um, what we'll do later on down the road, um, will be uh, pretty much a setup process on starting up the Ioneo for the first time. And then installation of games, which... Bear in mind, I have everything backed up on a sand disk, so I can just do a benchmark if need be quickly and efficiently. Uh, this is Trigger, and um, y'all have a grand one.